What's up, YouTube? It's Fitzbro, and we have our patch preview here for March. It is March 1st, and as far as these monthly updates for Age of Empires 4, really happy to see that they are really sticking to it. It is the first day of the month, and we already have our update for the week, at least the patch notes, and it sounds like the patch is going to be coming in the next few days. So let's dig into these patch notes. It's our first look. So this is patch number 11963, March 1st, 2022. It's releasing later this week, and we're hoping to provide a preview of what's to come for AoE 4. Continuing to hone in on tighter win rates across the range of possible Civ matchups and making changes to complement some of the updates introduced earlier in the month. Okay, so it looks like they're working on some Civ balance. Um, observe the reaction, etc., etc. Notice that after our last patch, the changes to Siege may have overly impacted Chinese. Where's our China mains at? I bet you this means we're going to get something for you. As a result, we're making some changes uh, around to provide the Chinese new strategic options. Additionally, we're looking to slow down the early game of the Mongols in Delhi. That's good to hear as far as balance changes. Okay, let's dig into it. I'm excited already. These sound like some good changes. General. Oh boy, not something that I expected to see. Wonder cost increased from 3,000 per resource to 6,000 per resource. Now, I don't see a ton of wonders personally. I bet they're more prevalent in, in perhaps some of the team games, but let's see what they say about it here. Wonders are meant to be a rare yet exciting stalemate breaker. We found the current costs are too low in larger multiplayer games. Okay, when allies can all attribute a single player. Okay, so I, they're just making it more competitive in team games and overall, I think this is an okay change. I don't, I don't know. I don't feel like my life is impacted by Wonders a ton, but I'm sure this will definitely improve teams just a little bit. Okay, Stonewall build time. Uh-oh, Delhi mains quivering their boots. Increased from 8 to 16 seconds. Additional adjustments made to Delhi specific Stonewall build time, okay? Um, they're very powerful because they can stop infantry and cavalry completely. Yes, we want the effort level of building walls to match their power level and allow more response time to their construction. Longer build times also make it more difficult for the enemy to immediately rewall a section that has been destroyed. Okay, I've got a problem with this. So Stonewall build time increased from 8 to 16 seconds. On the server, it sounds like, yes, that's going to slow down the Stonewall build time. But what's the biggest issue with stone walls right now in the early feudal age? The second you place that down and hit it one time, you immediately cannot path through it. You cannot attack it with anything but a siege unit. So changing the time it takes to build up to 16 seconds doesn't change that fact. It doesn't change the fact that you can go to like French pass and you can completely wall your enemy in by just hitting each segment one time. Like that doesn't change this, which I feel like that is probably the, the larger issue with stone walls. At least it'll take longer to finish the stone wall and then build like a stone wall tower if you're stone wall tower rushing. But I don't think this addresses the problem that it completely blocks you off by just setting the foundation and tapping it one time. Main premise to a bug where elephant attack animation cooldowns could be bypassed. Okay, so we knew that you could still animation cancel a little bit with elephants. Looks like they, they're making an improvement. We'll have to see how that actually pans out. And a crash when observing the game at eight times speed. Okay. Maps and quick match. Remove Boulder Bay, Confluence, and Black Forest from the 1v1 match map pool. Woo! Can you tell I'm excited? I hate those maps. Okay, they're gone from the map pool. Gone. Boulder Bay, Confluence, Black Forest. This is a huge improvement. Uh, re Really happy. <laughs> yes! Okay. They can still be selected for custom games. Yes. Okay. This is good to see. I'd expected some changes to maps coming in the, in the near future. I imagine this will even change more as we get closer to our spring update. But uh, good to see. Notes. Based on feedback we've heard from you and data we've referenced, the show that map, maps that appear to be most enjoyed in the quick match context. Okay. Reintroduce some of these maps to the quick match. So they're not gone for long. But that's okay. If they make some changes... Like, that's okay. Bring them back later or do some rotations. I'm okay with that. Once ranked is introduced, maybe there'll be vetoes. Who knows? Uh, some changes coming for Confluence as well as significant changes planned for 1v1 
map balance across the board related to resource and relic spawn and notable changes to fishing. Okay, map RNG. I've I've expressed my 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 concerns with this. They're talking about it. They're talking about it. Um, looking for your feedback um, in the forums. So go to the forums. Let them know your feedback in those official forums. You can post on Reddit. You can post in my Discord. You can post in wherever you want. Put it in the official forum so they know. Okay. Regarding what sort of maps you find most interesting in using Quick Match and why. Happy to see this change. That's maybe my number one concern in the game right now is maps, to be honest. Actually, while you're listening, please leave in the comments. Let me know what is the number one thing you would like to see change of Age of Empires. If you were in control of everything, what's the number one thing that's a concern for you? For me, it's maps. Civ specific changes. Chinese. Fixed a bug where the nest of bees would stop firing once its initial target died. What about the water? Can it fire in water yet? Uh, Imperial official and tax changes. What? Wait a second. What? In tax changes. More active use of the Imperial official taxes were previously too difficult to collect. We observed that players would avoid collecting their surplus taxes. Honestly, I haven't played China a lot because I'm just so annoyed with the Imperial official mechanics. We want players to be able to delete their taxes so the Imperial officials can get right back to supervising. Tax cooldown buildings increased from 15 seconds to 20 seconds. Fixed a bug that allowed the Capital Town Center to receive taxes after being destroyed. I didn't even know about that. Imperial A official supervised bonus increased from 150% back to 200%. Okay. I don't play a ton of China. I get annoyed how easy it is for them to speed boost out things um, compared to other civs like like Delhi has to research them at least, but they can like instantly. But honestly, the biggest change was the fact that you can't just focus that uh, uh, the clock tower. So it looks like they're going back to having 200% uh, supervised bonus. Wait, no, the supervised. Yeah, that, yeah, for the re maybe as regards particularly the resources. I don't know. Uh, tax carry capacity increased from 20 to 40 gold. Okay, so China players, you should love this Imperial. Uh, examinations tech back bonus to tax carry capacity increased from 40 to 80 gold wow so this is cool you can you can now hold up to 40 gold um instead of 20 which is a pretty big change for the early game right now a tax drop off location for the imperial official oh the imperial academy serves as a drop off point okay nice china changes um i think some 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 good quality of life there for the chinese good to see it delhi sultan i expect nerfs i never have said this before in a patch but i'm hoping to see some deli nerfs let's see what we see here sultan infantry stone wall gate build time increased from 30 seconds to 60 seconds why the gate specifically stone wall gate build time okay it's a little weird S starting wood reduced from 250 to 200 okay that's going to be that's going to change the beginning of the game, right? All those build orders, all those micros, macros, you're going to have to figure out how to use this, right? If you're accounting on using all of that 250 wood. So 50 wood less now. So maybe that just means you get that lumber camp a little more regularly. We intentionally gave the Daily Salt an extra wood, but we found that it took too much away from decision making and trade offs between opening strategies. So they're trying to force you to, to make some decisions which way you're going to go with Daily early on. This particularly could change like water maps, right? Throwing down a dock. If you're putting down buildings with that, like you're gonna have to make some decisions there. Sanctity gold boot bonus re reduced from 100% to 50%. Sanctity nerfed, holy cow. Gold generation bonus allowed for the Delhi Sultan to snowball towards Castle H or Sacred Victory with little, too little villager investment on gold veins. Wow, okay, so going to be a lot less gold coming in from these sacred sites now that sanctity is being nerfed okay so some some sizable changes to delhi here we'll have to see how this pans out let me know if you think it's enough or too much mongols okay we get excited what are they nerfing wonder cost increase yeah we knew that uh mongol uvu they're they're changing the uvu a little bit stone generation is no longer a flat 105 per minute it is now automatically, it scales through the ages, 80, 100, 120, and 150 by age. Okay, this is a nice change. Uh, will it be enough is always the question, right? 
We'll see. Honestly, I've been just wanting the, the, the Uvu to be placed in the Feudal Age and not be available in the Dark Age, but at least this is a significantly less 80 instead of 105. Mongol High Stone Production. Uh, early game provided snowballing map control advantage and a boosted economy. Wanted to spread out the effectiveness of the building so it's not quite as impactful early and is better late. Later, when Mongols struggle with a lack of walls. Okay, so some changes. We're going to, have to see how this works. Damage of Castle Con reduced from 12 to 8. Yes! Less pew pew damage to my villagers. I still think that the Khan does too much damage early on, even Dark and Feudal Age, personally. But uh, let's see. So damage has been reduced. They want it to support units, but don't want to be using it to snipe units, which we, we understand. Oh, man, a change. This is a core mechanic, the Yam Network. This is the movement speed uh, aura you get from uh, the Deer Stones that unlocks the, the Yam Network, right? Or from your towers. The movement speed bonus time reduced from 20 to 10 seconds. That means if you leave that radius, instead of having it for another 20 seconds, you only get it for 10 seconds. Now, I don't think this is a huge change because likely a lot of times Mongols have like a forward tower or something that's giving you that bonus. So as far as like you on the, on the, on the aggression, you're still not very far from a tower at most times. So, but it is a change. Um, set up rapid and retreat too easily for little wood commitment. Okay. Well, it's a change, but I, I'm not sure if this is extremely impactful. This is going to be the most interesting thing for me. I'm happy to see the colony a little bit less damage. Okay, what's next? So I think that's going to be it for this patch. We'll have more to share with you regarding our spring update lineup and its upcoming uh, public update preview very soon. In the meantime, our balance team wanted to share some major changes they have brewing for the Abyssin Dynasty. Woo! Chinese and Holy Roman Empire. Let's see. Major changes. Abyssin. The unique units of a civilization should stand out among its production roster and be especially exciting to build. <coughs> camels. While camels can be useful in some situations, they feel too limited in where they shine. Oh, I'm liking where this is going. To help camels pop, we are making them less specialized at fighting a single class of units and more useful across the board. The goal is to make is not to make exclusively camel armies, but for it to be more effective to mix a few in your composition. Also, every wing of the House of Wisdom should be a strategically viable choice in every age. Oh, we like the initial impact created by the economic wing in the feudal age, but the other choices choices aren't there yet. We've adjusted the power level of techs, moved them to different tiers, and reduced costs. Oh boy, guys, I am hyped for this change to Abbasid. This is something that could get me more excited to get into AOE 4 again because uh, I've been waiting for some love for Abbasid and it uh, looks like some camel changes are going to be happening. Some love to the, the different techs uh, and the House of Wisdom. So we'll just wait and see what that is. But very promising. Chinese. The Dynasty system offers a unique and fun way to advance the civilization. There are some frustrating parts we'd like to adjust while increasing the overall relevancy of its various unlocks the special units and buildings unlocked by the dynasty will always be buildable once they are unlocked okay so you can't lose it by changing uh dynasty or losing that building or something in addition we've moved all the dynasty buildings up one age so they become available at at the phase in the game when they are most needed okay so an overall to the dynasty system or a little, some tweaks at least and the hre We'd like civilizations to have, oh boy, we know what this is going to say, have multiple strategic paths to choose from throughout the course of an entire match. You mean not fast cast like every game? Currently, there's too much power in the late game landmarks for the HRE. You think? Leading to repetitive gameplay. We are creating more interesting decision making among the landmark choices for the HRE and giving them stronger options for distinctive play in the early game. So... TLDR, you can like guarantee this means they're going to be adjusting the Wretches Cathedral's gold uh, gold generation and the Palace of Swabia's like villager printing operation. So whether they change several landmarks will be interesting. They talk about the early game. So some stronger options. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what that actually means. But overall, honestly, with this patch, this is looking really promising to me. We have three big changes uh, that are going to be coming out in the future. 
for Abbasid, Chinese, and Holy Roman Empire. I wish I could see some of this sooner, but I can be patient. Uh, we've got changes to the map pool, which is probably the most important thing in my eyes. Uh, we've got some some Mongol nerfs. We've got some Delhi nerfs. These are just big parts of this game. So uh, really excited about this. Guys, let me know down in the comments. Did they hit the, your concerns? Are there things that are still missing? What are you looking to see? And of course, I'll be streaming this throughout the week of as we get close to this N4C tournament this coming weekend. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one.